All right. Hey there, everyone. I'm getting all the streams fired up. It'll be ready in just a second here. Let me make sure we're live and everything is basically functioning as it should. Everything but me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello. Welcome to Court of the Rings here on twitch.tv slash Lotro stream, youtube.com slash Lord of the Rings slash live, and facebook.com slash Lotro. I'm Lotro's community manager, Court Oven. And uh, here this week with a guest, uh, that being Druid's Fire, who is welcome on the show anytime as long as it isn't your birthday. Oh, damn, I better get off the show then. Yeah, yeah. So, happy birthday, Druid's Fire. How you doing? Uh, I don't have enough cake in my life today. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be running Durin's Day. Yep, that thing is back. We'll let you know how that goes. We're also going to be checking out the Harvest Math Festival. While we're doing that, I'm going to be answering uh, really as much of your questions about the Minas Morgul, perhaps bull roar that took place this week, or any other kind of questions that have come up regarding that. Uh, we'll do the best we can. Uh, I can't promise the answers will be good, but I will promise I will at least try to give you an answer. <laughs> How's that for a promise? All right. Oh, Jerry, you, yeah. <laughs> you and your promises. Speaking of promises, I promise I will have a badger pet. Uh, if not on this badger, character, badger, then on badger, one of my badger, other badger, characters. Badger, badger. Uh, the, uh, if you don't know, the Harvest Math Festival is in full swing. That kicked off Tuesday, right? 10 a.m. And it runs through November 3rd, 4th. If only there were an event schedule that you can look this stuff up on, Jerry. Before I go live, I know. What the heck? Uh, I, yeah. It ends on the 22nd at 3 a.m., so till the 21st. No, 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 you're talking about Durin's Day. Uh, no. Oh, no, November 5th. Yes. Wrong line. Yes. Harvest Math is through November 4th, being shut off on November 5th at 3 a.m. The reason that uh, confused me a little bit is I believe that's a Tuesday, which is a little unusual for us, but maybe not, huh? Uh, any, either way. Know. Yeah. Either way, it's through that Monday, and it'll be shut off that Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so really through the first weekend in November. However, uh, as Druid's Fire stated here, the Durin's Day event began at 10 o'clock Eastern this morning, and it runs through the 21st, which <coughs> is this Monday, being shut off at 3 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, October 22nd. So this is your weekend. You have really today, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday to get this done. It's a fairly easy thing to get done. Uh, hey, while I'm talking, can I just put you on follow? And then <laughs> can you please take me to the Durance Day event while I work my way through chat rooms, please? Sure. All right. Now, if you get killed because you're a level 64, that's not my fault. So just to let you know, even the moose will attack you as soon as you get on that bridge here. So we'll see what happens. Sure. No problem. Uh, true, Ellen Dilly, you get a new title this Wait a second, how's come that didn't work? Didn't I say follow? I thought I, I said don't know. follow. Follow. Okay. You get a new title this year. That is correct, Ellen Dill. Uh, Blossomberry asks, can you complete last year's Durin's Day deed, or is it a one-off thing? My understanding is it's a progression. So the one year you get basically tier one, next year you get tier two, et cetera, et cetera. And it, did I just give something away again when I was saying et cetera, et cetera? I think last year I hung, I strongly hinted that you should maybe attend the event uh, multiple years in a row. And uh, Ponton kind of stumbled upon the, the truth, as it were. As oft good truths are stumbled upon and uh, determined that there's a new deed this year, right? A new title that you get for completing a, basically a yearly deed here, right? I'm pretty yeah, sure that's how it works. So. Pretty sure that's how the process works. Uh, so you can expect that to continue, and you can catch up on it. <clears throat> well, you can catch up on it to the point that every year you can do a thing, if you wish. So it's like the anniversary stuff. Like uh, every yes. year you log in, you get the next year's stuff. Correct. Okay. So uh, I tried to hint pretty strongly. Go do this thing. 
last year, but last year it was deliberately desired on the part of, I believe, the content team to, to not be super, like, um, bullhorny uh, in regard to getting the word out about it. Let the players kind of discover this on their own. And so I think there were some hints that were given, but we, we del were deliberately a little bit, we wanted it to be kind of a surprise. And um, the same goes really for this event every year. Although this year, especially for, um, since it's not a surprise, since we did this last year, it made sense. I opted, shall we say, to put it onto the Lotro event schedule <laughs> regardless. Uh, because I just felt that it was important for those who maybe need to do some special planning for it to, to get those dates and times on there. But that is definitely something you should probably do if you care about this kind of thing. This is the Durin's Day event. Durin's Day event. How did you decide to put cosmetic option on PVMP areas now? Yeah, so I, I recognize that the timing may not be the greatest on it, but it was really a matter of functionality being done for something else that also applied to the uh, ability to wear cosmetic armor on the part of... Um, oops. Now I'm dead. What? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you've got a uh, uh, high elf with you. Yeah. I can revive for free, though. On this one. Oh, except I'm at Gloin's camp. Garbage. Yep, because you are under level. Garbage. That's garbage. Yep. All right. I'm going to show you something really cool about Erebor here in just a few moments, then, as soon as I get out of combat myself. All right. You can summon lobies into the inside of Erebor. Yeah. So we're going to take you to the grand stage and we'll I'll get you ported in and we'll do this better. So, so, so Soft Snake, the shorter answer to your question is the work was being done. We had an opportunity to apply it to oh, PVMP and it's just like, hey, why not for those who want to do it? Um, <clears throat> if you feel strongly otherwise. You know, it's something we'd probably want to hear. And not, don't focus on cosmetics, focus on underlying issues with PVMP. We're well aware of that, that, of that opinion. More that if you, if there's some reason why, like, under no circumstances should we ever allow cosmetics in PVMP or something like that, uh, let, me, let me know. So, uh, can we get a response from the responsible class dev to the Runekeeper feedback thread? There has been quite some criticism to the first iteration. Uh, my understanding is they are well aware of the feedback on Bulroar and they're working as they can on Runekeeper. You'll see the results of that work in the release notes when the time comes. So here is a really interesting question that I'm that came up this week that I wanted to make sure I put on the front half of the show. Uh, before I get to it, let me make sure. Should I stay where I am at Gloin's camp? Um, why don't you use uh, Mr. Coin to go to Erebor? Okay. Just same process, basically go to South Braid, etc. No, just use Mr. Coin. You got infinite Mr. Coin, dude. Just you go to the stable master map and go to Erebor. Well, I'm going to go back to the Dale and do it that way. That worked. Uh, and I can do that while I do other things. So my question is this. When we release the Minas Morgul expansion in the near future, it's going to include a Valar that will allow you to level up. And included in that Valar, as seen on Bullroarer this week, we are including essentially a, a pre-built LI, a pre-built legendary item that will um, be granted to you as part of the process. And that's to give you a leg up to really just kind of get stuff done uh, that you need to do at that level without with a, a minimal amount of backtracking. Now, here's the thing, though. This week we heard uh, on Bull Roar, and even we heard prior to that from, say, the Players' Council that um, we should be giving out first stage items instead. 
And Honestly, yeah. The reason should. we have not done that to this point is largely due to sensitivity over what it would mean to include a first stage item as part of that Valar package. Um, for example, if you look at Lotro's history, both, say, on the forums, in the community, in game, et cetera, et cetera, you'll see a lot of people saying, you know, if they ever give us first stage items or something, that will be the kind of pay to win barrier that will be too far. You know, that kind of thing. We've heard that quite a bit over the years. And so when it came time to make a decision in regard to this, we opted to do second age items just out of sensitivity to that concern, among other things. As uh, players have largely pointed out, you can get most of the way there on a second age compared to a first age. But if that's the case, then why not give out a first stage? And so it's something that we are, we've listened to your feedback on. And I guess I'm curious for those who are in Twitch chat today, I'd love to get your feedback on that. Do you think it would be a line too far to include a first stage item in the 120 Valar package? And if not, is the second age item going to be good enough to get you where you need to be? Please, first stage items. First stage, easy to get. If it's not imbued, Yeah, first stages are not hard to get. Yeah. The hard part is leveling them up. And first well, remember, this comes, with, this comes with some stuff to get you along that path, right? It doesn't get you all the way there or anything. You know, it's, it's not the most powerful thing you know it's it's what maybe some of two-thirds ish or something like that of the way there uh but enough to kind of get you started on the path without having to do a bunch of backtracking is the intention anyway so yep i like i said it's not like there's been an overwhelming amount of people saying such but there have been enough people saying, oh, can't you just make it first stage? Come on, it should be a first stage item. That it's like, well, I don't know, maybe we should. And uh, But we would not want, oh no, 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 ah, yeah, 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 yeah. ah. All right, well, this is maybe not going to work, let me, huh? Let me get Galdwin up to where we need to go. Yeah, and just rally horn me there. I can't rally horn you here. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. When when the when the nameplate under the mini map is read to you, you cannot be summoned to that place. Yeah, that makes sense. That was one of the things that we were having uh, to deal with when we took Professor Corey up this way, uh, and he was on a level one hundred in the Vales of Anduin, which is um, not friendly to him. So that's why we were really concerned every time he would go. Oh, look at this! And run off to the path, and oh my god, I, I swear that man ages me every time he goes on a. Run <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so let me get Galdwin up there, and then we will try again to get your sorry behind up here. I think what we're going to have to do is actually take it where we're. I'm going to have to kill mobs along the way instead of just running in there. Yeah, it could be, or we could just skip this. I think I've <clears throat> made the point that you should be doing the Durin's Day event this weekend, so perhaps we don't need to actually show it, and I can just do that on my own. So, uh, Alright, uh, we can actually do the Harvest Math stuff, maybe instead, at least for now, and if we want to give it a shot later on in the show, maybe we should do that, huh? What do you think? Uh, well, I can do it on my show, anyway. Yeah, alright. But I wanted to make sure Galdwin got here, because she's only level 80. Sure. Alright, we'll just do that, then. No auto grant first stage items, please. See, that's the that's the hang up here, right? We we are sensitive to people's concerns and that kind of thing, and we wouldn't want to do it if if people would feel strongly that we shouldn't. Plain and simple, right? <clears throat> All right, so I have the new title, which is really nice. So it would replace the title that I earned on this character. No mithril coin needed, Jerry. I'm a lucky duck. <laughs> nice. Lucky 
All right, let me pop on over. I'm going to actually switch to my other character. Yeah. So I can uh, at least get your hunter ports and stuff. <clears throat> Good day. Might I have a word with you? Could I take a moment of your time? Sam Burke is suggesting shield wall, except I'm playing a captain, not a guardian. Oops, I need to pick up the rap request first. Oh no, I did. Yes. Good, good, good. I did already. Thanks. All right. Uh, let me take a little pause here and head on over to chat. Can game masters realize for deeds log make a search option? Um, I think that would be an engineering task. I think what you're asking for is a search option in your deeds log, kind of just like a, a quer query search or whatever that is, right? Where you just kind of can type things in and it sorts as you yeah. type. Um, that would be an engineering task. I know that their plate is not conducive to that at the moment, um, but that sounds like something that would uh, make sense. So, hopefully. You know, especially with the kind of craft and carry all stuff that's uh, going on. We've got a little bit of work going on that way behind the scenes. So if, if an opportunity presents itself, maybe maybe there's something we can do there. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. And I wouldn't want to commit them clearly on a live stream. All right, now let me head back to the chat just a little bit. Right. I walk back with my barrel of apples. The first age requirement is irrelevant since it's super easy to get them now. It was a concern when they were hard, like on level T2 raids. Yep, I think that is probably the overwhelming um, kind of thing we've heard so far. But like I said, it's not been like, you know, huge numbers of people even commenting on it because it's been more, you know, undercover as it were. FA because in the long term you're going to want that anyway. Otherwise, if you want an FA later, you'll have to throw out the SA to you put all that time into slash thread. <laughs> There's a valid point. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Getting a first stage is super easy. Let's do a couple of roving threats quests. Yep, and uh, you can also run um, if you go do the treasure caches in old school in Eriador, um, if you do them off enough uh, various characters, you can then earn your gift giver's brands to then trade in for a first aid weapon. Yeah. Uh, and, and I just want to let people know who are perhaps a little concerned in chat after reading what I, or hearing what I just said and everything. They, nothing is absolutely committed to or anything. This is me kind of getting initial feedback, early feedback from Twitch chat amongst other sources. So it's not like anything is confirmed or happening or anything like that. But I, I, I did want to hear from you because I, it seems like something that if there is a strong opinion about it, that it seems like something that could potentially happen. Hey, I think either you or Galdwin is the leader of the kin of the fellowship now. So can you invite me back? Oh. Who's Galdwin? You should be. Galdwin's the leader? Oh. 
I don't know who Goldwyn is. Goldwyn was uh, that other player that was running with us that I took up the mountain. Oh, <laughs> okay. She's sorry. A, she's a regular of the stream. Oh, mostly. okay. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I, I uh, didn't catch that. Hi, Goldwyn. I can fight Goldwyn back. I just didn't know what to do. Well, no, what happened was I invited her to the fellowship. Oh, uh, okay. I made sure she got up the hill. And then uh, once that was done, uh, when I switched character, uh, the fellowship uh, leadership changed over to her. So are we going to go to Spooky Town? Yeah. I'm just kind of... What? I've run out of time. Yeah, the dance ones are pretty particular. Oh, that's the other one, I guess. I, I know, Wayward. You, you totally need I... to get that title. Oh, I wasn't on the stage. That's what my problem was. Dorf. Oh, no, I completed it. All right, cool. Groove. Let's head into the Wismead. I Frankly, you can... The thing is, I just pull up a couple of these quests real easy. Um, I Like I said, I've been avoiding treats and trickery. Is other people do that? <coughs> sure, do you, why not? Yeah. The Trace of Trickery is uh, helpful. Um, oh, it's Riddle in a Bottle that I timed out on. That's oh. what happened. Okay, that's going to happen. Oh, again. yeah, that one because yeah, that, I just picked you it have up to actually for run the, the burrow. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I do every uh, Harvest Math is I park most of my tunes who don't have the skeleton steed next to the chest in the basement um, where, where you can hit it once every 24 hours. And I really wish it was put on the daily timer and said, like, you know, it would always reset at three as opposed to, you know, being a 24 hour timer just in case you have something else and you get past three. It's annoying. Let me answer another big question. This one from Joego. Uh, is Minas Morgul still scheduled to be released at the end of the month? Uh, we have not said anything counter to that as of yet. If that changes, you will probably be the second to know. <clears throat> Look, it's made of lines. Wait, the, no, it's bingo bobbins. The uh, first being me, and uh, the, the second being you. Um, obviously, we're getting pretty darn close, aren't we? Um, so if, if something's going to happen yeah. in that regard, we're probably going to have to figure that out. But, uh, but you know, I, well, we are currently set for them. So there you are. So here's a question that has come up uh, with the introduction of the carryalls, which I think, by the way, are a really awesome idea. And it's like, how has DDO had this for nine years and we haven't? Um, I know, right? You know, well, people are, you know, understandably concerned is are the two that are being offered uh, with the collectors and ultimate editions, um, are they going to be the only possibilities? Because uh, there have been others uh, witnessed on Bullroar. And it sounds like a great idea. So are those two exclusive to those editions? Or will there be other potential bags added to the system for people to buy with uh, Lotro points? Sure. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, no, no, that's a good question. Let me, let me make sure I get the right answer for you. So let me just pause for a second here and make sure I'm doing this right. So... The answer to your question is they are this t this is regardless of its similarity and in many ways technical similarity to what has existed in DDO for some time. This is a new technical system that we are introducing to Lord of the Rings Online, and we are debuting it deliberately and uh, somewhat carefully. It will not be forever exclusive to, you know, the collectors and ultimate edition of Minas Morgul. But that is, at least currently, the only place they are available. And if they become available in other ways, that is something that we will announce when the time comes. But at this point... 
If you're just like, well, I'm just going to hold my breath until it gets up in the Lotro store, you're going to be waiting a while. So. Well, that would make sense. I mean, with at the at the very least, I personally have been expecting if something like that does get put on the store, it'll won't be until the actual expansion is no longer well goes on the store as well. Basically, you know. I will say that, that uh, it will remain a part of the collectors and ultimate edition packages that I'm aware of um, for the foreseeable future. So it will be available through that method for those who want it. And you know we. We may find some other place to put it or something like that, too. But it's, it's not going to be like going straight to the Lotro store. There has been a lot of interest in various options for that, like instrument bags. It's got to be called a kickback, too. You know me. <laughs> I want the task bag. <laughs> So does Big Ed. Big Ed would also yeah. like a fishing, an actual fisherman's creel become a real thing, um, because that's a thing. So I, you know, don't like to discuss the other game on this podcast, but this tech does has existed for some time over in DDO, where they use it for their main collectibles, ingredients, crafting, et cetera, et cetera, style bags. Um, so you know, it's been like that for a while um, as a thing that exists. Similar to maybe the task bags here. Oops, did I run out of time? Oh, that's riddled on the bottle um, again. Okay, where, where's, let's see. What are you looking for? I'm trying to shake off effects. I got one left to do. Oh, no, there's like food. That's what it is. Okay, on the table. Knew there was something I was missing. All right. Sorry, I got distracted. What was I talking about? Uh, bags, task bags. Oh, uh, uh, they have gem bags, uh, which mm -hmm. are a form of currency that just kind of similar to the gold you would earn in Lotro. Uh, they're, they're a bunch of items that just kind of sit around. Vendor and then trash. get Vendor trash, yes. And there are people who might consider task items to be somewhat... Systemically similar. <laughs> you said it. Oh, uh, golly. Where's my gourds? All right. Yeah, let me put that to the tracker. You're out of your gourd. I want to let me add to the tracker. Uh, increase task. So the other concern that a couple of people in chat are having, and Chromite brought this up last week as well, um, there are some folks who want their Valar on one server or region and want their carryall to appear on a different yes. region. I don't think there's any tech you guys have that can make that happen, right? No, unfortunately, not currently. Um, yes, uh, we have seen that feedback. Uh, the reality is that Minus Morgul is going to launch with the current functionality. Uh, I recognize that maybe that's not ideal for everyone who wants to do one thing on one world and another thing on another world. Uh, but that is the just sort of reality of the delivery system as it currently stands. I'm going to have to make a pick. All right. Any plans to make Second Age Baradur taller? And if not, is there any lore reasoning or background as to why it's not as tall as pictured? On the forums, people are saying the Second Age version took 600 years to make. The Third Age resembles the previous. Uh, that's a great piece of content feedback. I will make sure to pass that along to the content team. Persuasion Valor is fine. X, Y, and Z is way more pay to win. That's fine. <laughs> you don't 
won't ask that question if you're not prepared to get an answer. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Are we ever considering making a new class in the future? Um, yes. Nothing to announce, though. And hopefully this won't lead to another story of... Don't show up on Massive Lotro like, creates a new class. It's like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that like last time. <laughs> yeah. so you're considering I it. I ain't saying then... that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, certainly that's something that that in the design space has come up and discussed and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know. Well, here's a question for chat. If, and I stress if, they ever considered a new class... What kind of class would you be interested in having? Now we're we're talking like what role can it fill in gameplay that doesn't currently? Because we're not talking like lore, because you can always find a lore reason to have a class. I want to see what can it add to your gameplay, to your rotations, to your raid groups that we don't currently have. Sounds like we're all on the same page with allies then. Yeah, nothing to announce, though. I can't, I, like I said, I'm not making any promises. <clears throat> it just was really a, a th more of a theoretical argument being posited on the live stream to get player feedback on so that when asked, um, we have, you know, hey, some sense of, hey, Flashpoint answers was this kind of a thing, you know? Oh, is that not the right? What are you doing? Never mind, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who really want a bag on a different server, uh, for the moment, the answer is you'll have to wait till the next opportunity to pick one up. I know that may not be great news to some, but that, that is, like I say, the technical reality of things as it stands. <clears throat> I have to say, I really love what um, um, Dar Celtics did with the uh, the Chance Thomas Tom Bombadil theme for this. So good. Oh, I actually have the music turned off just because sometimes I get feedback. It's like, I love the podcast or the, the show, but could you kind of the music you know after an hour of you sitting around answering questions gets a little tiresome as it were don't say that so, around bill he'll write no, a song about you i know and it's not to reflect any of the work it was just it's just kind of a technical consideration <laughs> to have sometimes. i hear you yeah but he he um basically cast it in a minor key and it, oh my god it's so good yes it is very good slowed it down yeah and he is doing the soundtrack for Minus Morgul, so I can't wait to see what he does. Mm -hmm. Oh, I completed a quest called Wayward Shadows. Hey, Wayward Plane, are you a bit shadowy today? All right. Uh, Multi-server says in DDO, you can only have one of each size of those bags. One small, one medium. Is this the case with Lotro 2? I don't think that's true. I'm pretty sure I've got multiple smalls at the very least on quite a few of my characters. Um, I don't, I would need to double check to know what the technical implementation is on the Lotro side here, but... My belief is you should be able to have multiple per multiple kind of per character if you acquire it that way. I don't recall them saying unique in the tooltip. Yeah. I do know that my scholar, in and of herself, is going to wind up using all 50 slots of the, the larger bag. No. 
No, Sarnelith. Oh my gosh. Uh, in Twitch chat says, if I get my Valar in the legendary server, can I hang on to it until the cap there is high enough to use it? I mean, technically, I think you probably can. I would not, as a general rule, suggest redeeming this stuff on the legendary world if you have play characters outside of the legendary world that could probably make use of it. But, uh, but yeah, I think theoretically the answer to that is yes. You can, if you want to. But it ain't bring them in a while, so. I'd be curious to see what happens if somebody tried. Don't do it! Don't yeah, do it I, I don't recommend it, but I, but if it's the only server you play on, maybe that is what you want to do. Um, and, and yes, I think from a technical perspective, I believe that that is how it works. Will Shelob be will the Shelob raid be released with Minus Morgul or a month or so after the release? And how about the limited title for completing raid T three? Nothing to announce on the T three for the Shelob raid today, but I will say it is not releasing with Minus Morgul and will be released after post release, similar to what we've done uh, in the past. There, the Shelob raid will be coming. I believe we actually have some. Instances coming after release, and then the raid coming after the release. I would recommend, speak, uh, folks who are speaking about which server to log into after launch, if you're expecting an item to appear on the first character, set yourself a reminder to remind yourself to log into the correct server. I mean, you're technically not stuck there once character transfers reopen. Um, but it, I would just say, in general, if you <clears> have, like dual play on both legendary and non-legendary it probably makes sense to to get that valar on a non-legendary world if you plan to use well it i was actually thinking term. in terms of uh eu and na like folks like crow might play on both servers right equally so that is also a concern to to have yeah Uh, sorry, Tim99x, for not, not getting to your class, as it were. Uh, I talked, I actually, this week I went to Vassin's desk at one point. I said, yo, what's up with classwork? Uh, and he gave me an answer about um, kind of his tentative plans about maybe what he'd like to do when, etc. It's going to happen. It's just I am not going to commit him to what's happening when in what order. I won't do it sorry you'll you'll know because you'll see it you'll see it on bull roar you'll see it on the forums etc <clears throat> well at least you know for sure that um that it's possible that we'll eventually be able to get those bags uh, on other servers. Um, though, to be fair, honestly, we've survived without them this long. So. All right. Uh, let me answer this question from Fel Newell. This one over on YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. Is can you say if the character transfer will be able again when the expansion will come out? I'd like to transfer my character to another server for the new content. Um, so. I would expect that character transfers will remain disabled through the release of the Minus Morgul expansion. When there's people, not people, that's too broad a term, but there are some people on the forums who have speculated that the uh, shut off of free character transfers was done directly as a result of a particular behavior that had to be corrected with the Motes, Embers, and Figments cap. The reality is that contributed to it, but there was another technical reason as well, which is that we are doing some upgrades to our server array in the coming weeks. And some of that work t took place this week, uh, frankly, yesterday morning over on Landreval, where we are now, and will be continuing to take place in the future. And while that work is taking place, we cannot have... Uh, certain elements of the character transfer system 
active. And so I believe the character transfer system, when it eventually turns back on uh, under whatever rules it's going to have, um, will be after the release of Minas Morgul. Runekeeper update not good enough. All right. Sorry, Nathan. I missed your uh, I missed your <coughs> comment on Facebook, but I quick saw that you were an anniversary follower. Facebook tells me so. Congratulations on your anniversary of following us on Facebook. I guess I didn't know that was a thing. You've managed to stick with your mistake for a year. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can do the challenging wheat here. All right. Have fun. Yeah. Last night I was able to get it done, but it took me four runs, I guess. Ashigaru brings up a good question. I believe I can answer for you. Okay. Um. Are the title rewards from Extra Life the oh, one you pick yeah. a single character or account bound? They are all account wide. Oh, is that true? Yeah, the titles are. The titles are. Okay, okay, great. Great to hear. So I didn't want to commit to that yesterday because the reality of is reward X account or character bound is kind of a tricky one. The reality of the quote community loot list is something I myself have aptly named based on you know its intended purpose is kind of a hodgepodge of stuff dating all the way back to 2007 and because of that it's sort of strange history of creation it's all over the place uh, as to binding state <coughs> who redeems what what's granted to who etc cetera, etc cetera. And so generally, I just don't guarantee any of that. It's, it is what it is, so to speak. And that's the best I can do. Uh, but you're telling me that all of the titles are account bound. All the titles have always been account wide. Um, the Tundra Cub and Spirit Bear have also been account wide. Um, anything that's an item like the housing trophy, the fiddles are, are one per character. With the steeds, uh, the Cremelo steed, the Perlino steed, and the steed of the Red Dawn have traditionally been account wide, but the steed of the White City, I'm not sure of. I don't. One of them one I is. know, and part of the reason I ended up on a community loot list is because of its issues, and that is was that one of your cats? Yeah, it's Thief Kitty. He's being a butthead. Sorry about that. No, no problem. I just... I, you see, I'm even getting yelled at by your cats oh. today. What the heck, man? No, I'm kidding. Well, Jerry, yeah. he's mad yeah. because you forgot my birthday until I, I didn't remind forget your you birthday. About it. Oh, I, well, I may have forgotten it. You did yesterday, but that's Probably. fine. I barely remember my own birthdays the, within 24 hours of it happening. Yep. Well, you're busy on your birthday driving. I think that's true. My birthday is usually kind of a non-event. Your life is a non-event. I have nothing to announce regarding <laughs> the the announce. I have nothing to announce regarding a Valar 120 being available in the Lotro store. Nothing to announce. Sorry. Isn't it in the uh, expansion notes that it, the Valar and the Stout Axes are going to be available? Oh, is it? Is it just? Yeah. Yeah. Or did, am, did I I, am I misremembering? Am I misremembering? I was actually going to call gonna... it up right now. Minus one. Yeah, look it up. Minus one. Uh, no, base edition includes Minus Morgul region and instances only 2495 points in March 2020. Stout Axe Dwarf uh -huh. for 1000 okay, points it. in March 2020. Uh, we did not specify anything about Naria. Or not an Aria, but a, a Valar uh, yeah. being placed in the Can you tell us what the store. name of the new Valar is so we can stop calling it an Aria, please? No. 
Dang it. <laughs> I want to know. This Although I believe the me. name has been decided at this point. So the answer could be a yes. I just don't happen to know it off the top of my head. Um, but I believe it, it is at this point decided. So. <clears throat> um, didn't I read somewhere that the price of the new Valor, when it gets put in the store, is the same price as the Aria? Am I, did I oh, did, did uh, SSG Red Panda maybe say something about that? I, I think don't know. he did. Soliloquy because of the Valar. Did. Okay, good, good, good. Soliloquy. Neat. Yeah. I like that. Great. Oh, okay, well, thank, thank you for being uh, more informed than I am at this moment because I just happen yeah, to be Jerry. really busy. Uh, part of the reason I actually have been really busy is a thing I wanted to make sure I wrap up the – made sure got ed discussed the show – and then it's a little thing called Extra Life. Uh, so as of this past week, I have kicked off our Lotro and DDO and Standing Stone games. It's all under the Standing Stone games banner here. Uh, for Extra Life, again this year, to raise funds for the Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, thanks to the Lotro community and the DDO community, but especially the Lotro community for historically supporting Extra Life. Uh, you guys made a huge difference last year, and we were the top fundraiser for the Boston Children's Hospital. Um, that kind of thing gets noticed, and especially when you're a hospital treating sick kids, regardless of their family's ability to pay. And so what we did last year, and what we do every year, but last year also really called out that, hey, what we're doing matters here. So we're kicking that off again this year extra-life.org slash team slash SSG. It's not too bad. Not too bad. extra-life.org slash team slash SSG if you want to donate. You can donate to any of the team members. If you want to make my life slightly easier, you can donate to me, but it's fine if you want to donate to other streamers or other people or other hospitals. You know, if, if you're like, I want to support Extra Life, but I, but I know my friend is doing it for X hospital close <laughs> to me or something like that. That's fine, too. That's fine. Uh, the main thing is when you donate, go over to the Lotro forums, and there's a little just four-question thing. I need you to shoot me in a PM. And what I'm doing is I'm getting all that uh, put in one place so that I can quickly respond to everybody with codes that will re be redeemed to your account through the Lotro store in-game. So you'll open the Lotro <coughs> store, click redeem code, and then you'll put those various codes in-game. Now, I am ahead of the curve this year. This is year four I've done it for both games, which, and then I did it three or so years on the... GDO side prior to that. So I'm no stranger to, to this kind of thing. Uh, but this year I'm actually ahead of the curve, which is great, because that means that there's a potential for <laughs> me to be able to distribute codes earlier rather than later. And if that happens, I will let you know. But at the moment, at least, I'm nicely caught up on all the private messages that have been sent to me as of what? 8.17 p.m. yesterday? Something like that. Uh, so that's cool. And hopefully that can get it done. Now, there is one piece uh, Lotro specific I should probably mention. And that is if you, there are incentives to donate, you know, things from this community loot list that we talked about that include some titles and some maps. <coughs> and uh, there's a couple of kind of pets, other things, stuff. And you too Good can uh, get that if you want. Uh, and I've listed it all out on there. I said on the forums that I'm pretty flexible. But what I mean by that, because uh, I, I had to make some people sad yesterday. Uh, what I mean by that is I can't get you that pre-purchase exclusive from the one expansion that you can't get anymore. Uh, I can't do that in exchange for your donation. I'm sorry. Uh, it is, I am limited to the things that are on the community loot list there. But if you were just like... Yeah, except I want two of this one instead of one of this one or whatever. That's fine. That's fine. I'm totally willing to, like, you know, <coughs> adjust as necessary. Um, but in terms of things that are not on the list, I really do I can't just try <coughs> to get you that uber rare thing. Sorry. And if you 
may already have all of the the stuff this year, except we have that new title. There's a yeah, new title. and that's the thing. There's a new title, and and this a long way to get to that is that I'm prepared to get just about everybody all the codes they need, except for the new title, and the reason for that is it's not in game yet. It's not actually in the game data yet, so I can't clearly can't make codes against it something that doesn't right. yet exist so uh it's going to be a little while on that one and but for those of us who play yeah. both games gump gang but gang. F- other than that title i believe i can pretty much get you codes for the rest like today i may have to make a few codes here and there but for the most part oh, gosh darn it of course i'm on cooldown so i have to find the actual exit Lost in the maze. So, so from a design perspective, this is clearly the better way to do it. From a yeah. I get lost easily perspective, there's a part of me that wishes it would be like the other festival. <laughs> and I could just sort of memorize the path, you know what I mean? Well, you know what I one, mean? Yeah. No, but this yeah. one's interesting because there's, a, there's like five different maps. It, there is, yeah, yeah. Which made it much more yeah. fun, but then again, people would just publish which map for which day, and then uh-huh. if we wanted to do it that way. Yeah. Fun. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. So I get lost okay. easily in video games. There's some kind of trend on like the new PS4 games, which is just like, oh no, we're not going to show you maps, and I'm like, please, please. I, I don't. I like my UI. I need it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Our good chicken runner Hello Grow is standing next to you. Oh, nice, nice, great. <clears throat> uh, so the other thing I want to mention before I wrap things up. So just please extra dash life dot org slash team slash ssg if you want to donate. You can go to the forums and find out what you get for various donations. Private message me your donation info on the forums. You know, all I I don't need much. All I need is basically a form name, which I get from you PMing to me, and then the uh, donation <coughs> name, if applicable, that you use to make the donation, the amount, the approximate day. Like it was a 17th or 16th or 15th or whatever it was. That's all I need. I don't need anything else other than that. Um, and that's enough for me to be able to reply to your forum PM and get you the codes that I've matched with uh, the spreadsheet of donations. So that's what's up there. And I would say that next weekend, uh, this time, we are going to be in the midst of a Lotro Stream Extra Life Marathon. That's right. Uh, we have not yet announced the formal date and time, but I think we're ready to do so. That is going to be Friday, October 25th, on the Lord of the Rings Online side, tomorrow, the day following that Saturday for the other game. And then that Sunday for my personal, if anyone... And trust me, you don't care. But if you would care, it's going to be that someday. And so Friday, noon to midnight Eastern, we're going to have a whole bunch of Lotro streamers here raising money for Extra Life. We have a goal of $10,000. We have currently raised 6380 which is an amazing start. You guys crushed my personal goal, which was hopeful. I did not want to presume your generosity. And uh, you crushed it. Uh, and we're there. We're getting there. Uh, we have a goal of 10,000. We're currently at 6,380. I'm taking formally donations through November 15th, but it's a little flexible if you care. I am doing November as well, if you're interested in that uh, for your donation purposes. Some people care about that kind of thing. And uh, what else should I mention? Next Friday, Lotro Stream Marathon. Sorry, I was answering somebody's question in chat. Uh, Somebody uh, is having problems creating. Raj11 is having problems creating an account. Oh, yes. So we are troubleshooting. We are actively troubleshooting a current registration issue that in most cases is reported to not prevent people from registration, but which is certainly not ideal. And that is that there is a display issue happening on registration right now uh, that makes it look really strange in your web browser. And uh, like I say, most of the time people are reporting that they can get through it. But there are people on the forums, including 
perhaps the person who is communicating with us on Twitch, who are not. And we are actively troubleshooting that and actively working to resolve it. You don't actually need to send in something to customer service, although it certainly doesn't hurt because we'll, we'll work with you to, to make sure your account gets created. Um, but there is a sh widespread short-term issue taking place right now with account registration that we are actively troubleshooting and have been actively troubleshooting for a little while. Okay. Mm -hmm. It sucks ors. As I believe so the official to... statement is it sucks ors. And we are aware because of it. Because obviously you want people to be able to make accounts so they can play the game. Yes. We want you to join us. Cord has lost the Man, four We I know for the second time. I haven't found the, I, like I said, I've, I found the, it took me three tries uh, last night, but the map's changed since then, and I am not, I have not, as of yet, I don't think on live stream, found the exit. Is this it? Oh, here we go. Okay. Ooh, Soft Snake has a great question. When are we going to expect uh, the next producer's letter for next year? Mm. That is a good question. I know a lot of 2020 planning is actively underway. You know, it, it's pretty common for businesses to, to need to get their plans in order by the end of the year kind of a thing. Um, so that is formally underway. I don't want to drop any hints or anything at this point. I'm not sure if it's going to be before or after the holiday break. It could be before, it could be after. I think it kind of depends on when things come in at certain time periods and things like that. But uh, but frankly, we got a busy plate here. We got to get Mortar out the door, and then we got some instances and mm, raid Minus coming. Morgul. Yeah, Minus Morgul and a bunch of other stuff happening here. So so I, I don't want to talk too much <laughs> about dates and times at this point. But that you know, I hear you. Oh hey, speaking of Miss Morgul, do you know when Bull Roar is going down this afternoon? No other than this afternoon. Uh, I believe it's somewhat dependent on QA resources. I think typically they usually are four-ish, something like that. I don't know if he gave I a formal time on the forum thread, but it's usually four-ish, four to five-ish. If he had, I like wouldn't that. have asked. Yeah, so I'm guessing four to five-ish, something like that, but we'll see. Oh, by the way, you need to tell Maid of Lions he has to cosplay as Bingo Boffin for Halloween. Because his NPC and the one of his two NPCs in the Isengard tab is Bingo, so and Jeff is totally Bingo. I would love to get Vassin on Court of the Rings for just a hey, answer all your class questions. There may be oh, someone okay. who was just mentioned who would be, I'm sure, absolutely thrilled to be on camera answering questions for an hour about upcoming classwork. <laughs> over their lunch period. <laughs> I'm not trying to cast aspersions against Vassin. I'm saying that sometimes he's it can shy. be a little challenging. He's a little shy. Maybe. maybe. He's been on camera before, so we know he can do it. But, uh, but there's also a lot, you know, because <clears throat> the people in the community care very deeply and tend to have very strong opinions on it and tend to take statements made by the design team even if it's fairly tentative they give it a lot of weight uh, you know i think in general he prefers to be more of a written word kind of person but i'm not opposed at all to it if, if we can get him in front of a camera for a while talking classwork you know i'm down so yep well tell him i politely asked him if he would come on the show yeah but Chad, if we get him on the show, y'all have to behave yourselves. <laughs> no, uh, you can't tell me when the 120 Valar will release because it's not decided yet. No, no, no. The 120 Valar will be released with Minas Morgul. Sorry if I gave you uh, an answer other than that. No, I think they were... There, there's a discussion about whether it'd be available separately. Oh, understood. Yeah, correct. It will not be separate. 
in the Lotro store upon Nindismorgul's release. That much I can tell you. Yep. Some later date. I'm not even saying that. You and I need to compare notes before the show sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, if I don't make people angry on a Friday, I'm not <laughs> doing my job. No, uh, it's not true. Uh, thank you very much, actually, for being here. Uh, you are going to be taking over in a few minutes for Corey, as I understand it. Negative, Ghost Negative. Rider. Negative. Uh, Corey okay. is doing his show as normal this week. Next week, we're kicking him out so we can do Extra Life, but... Um, he, he basically is going to, he's he's busier than you are, so just imagine that for just a few seconds, Jerry. Um, so he's yeah. just going to take the weekend off. However, he is doing a special marathon tomorrow on twitch.tv slash SignumU for the end of the SignumU annual fundraiser, which is a completely separate deal. Technically, it is a charity because they're registered with Amazon. But anyway, that's a completely separate thing. It's not related to Extra Life. But that's a Corey thing, and he's going to be doing that tomorrow for God knows how many hours. Cool. And you can find the full schedule over on twitch.tv slash LotraStream. I will be back next Friday, and we'll see kind of what we end up doing. Maybe at that point, if we've got a second bull roar going or something like that, maybe we'll show off a little bit there. I didn't want to do any kind of content spoilers on this particular show. That's why I'm really just kind of doing odds and ends today and all that sort of thing hope you're enjoying the harvest math festival hope you're enjoying durin's day check it out this weekend if you can i'll see you next friday have fun everyone thanks for being here